all, this is Dana here. In this video, I'm going to be continuing on with the video I did last time about how to do a pin stitch on linen or other even weave fabric. Uh, as you can see, I've left off here. And uh, so what I'm going to be doing in this video is showing you how to do fractional stitches. So quarter stitches, three quarter stitches, things like that. As you can see, the two stitches that I've done here are what are called full stitches. That's why a lot of my patterns, or pretty much all of my patterns currently, um, do state on the pattern that they are full stitches only. Uh, that way you know that there's no fractionals involved. Uh, potentially in the future some of the patterns I offer might have fractionals, but for the meantime I'm just keeping them full stitches as that way people, um, you know, they don't have to worry about trying a new technique if they've never done it before as they fractionals can be intimidating depending on what you're doing uh, as I showed in the last video I'm just gonna pick up my camera I'm working on this piece here which is uh, the beginning of a sockeye salmon this is the spirit of the sockeye by Blaine Billman it's really really lovely it's my first time working on black linen it's my first time um, doing fractionals it's first for a lot of things. It's the first time I'm doing a 2 over 2 on 28 count and I'll show you what that means in a moment. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting. It's actually my first pattern I've bought probably since I was a little kid too. I uh, recently, Since I got back into cross stitching I've actually been designing my own and experimenting with uh, importing my own artwork into my patterns and designing them and uh, such so I haven't really done anybody else's patterns in a really long time. So this uh, sock I was definitely a first and it's really lovely I, I really can't wait to keep working on it uh, but it, this one uh, does have fractionals in it which was a first for me so I've been learning how to do them uh, through this pattern and uh, the stitching studio patterns are actually really good like it's got this uh, I'm just gonna back the camera up a little bit so you can see a bit better it's got um, a whole big page of different um, techniques and things like that particularly for people who've never done uh, fractionals before which I think is fantastic because a lot of the uh, patterns that use fractionals like um, like say heaven and earth designs or dimensions or whatever um, I'm not sure I haven't bought them but I'm not sure if they actually do give instructions about how to do fractionals in the pattern directly if you haven't done them before uh, so what I'm going to be doing is uh, sort of abbreviating some of these instructions just to make it easier for people to understand and I'll also be putting um, like I won't be taking this exact chart because this is theirs but I'll be making my own version of this chart um, with some instructions and putting it onto the blog post that this video will be part of and the link for that will be in the video description below and then people can download that um, that little chart for free and just uh, use that as a reference if they like so uh, as you can see it explains here full stitches, quarter, half stitches, quarter stitches all this kind of stuff so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be basically showing you how to do your quarter stitches and your three quarter stitches. A half stitch is what's called just a tenth stitch. That would be just, uh, say, sorry, focusing uh, one half of of the full X. That would be a half stitch, or what's you know, like I said, also called a tenth stitch. Um, so the reason that you use fractionals is uh, you can get a lot more detail into a pattern for that particular fabric size. So for say, for example. Um, in this case, I'm using uh, this is the 28. This is a bit of leftover fabric from the from the sockeye. It's 28 count uh, cashel linen. So if you're going one over one, which I will show you, just focus it. So one over one is so this is 14 count Ada fabric. What I'm holding right now. So traditionally, you go one over one with Ada. You'd go up one hole over one. There's your X right there, and then you go X. So it's one over one. Or sorry, I. In this case, it's two over one because it's two strands of the floss. You can see here I'm using two strands of it, so it's to be two over one. In this case here, for this demo that I did for the, the pin stitch video in the last video, um, it's two over two, so it's two strands of floss over two holes. So you'd go up one, up two, over one, over two. So two over two. So two strands over two holes. That's what two over two means. So the fractionals, you can get more detail because you can do instead of doing the full stitch like these ones are you can just do a little tiny section in one color or you can do part of it in one color and that way you can get a lot more detail so say instead of trying to make a diagonal line by having a stitch here another stitch here another stitch here you can actually get much more graduated diagonal lines like when you're changing colors and things like that like you can see 
just gonna bring in this pattern here. You can see in this pattern, I'm just gonna focus it. You can see there's a lot of really sharp demarcations of color, and that is, these are where all your fractional stitches are gonna be, where the colors are changing. So that way it allows you to get a lot more detail into um, the pattern without either having to change how the pattern looks or use a much higher thread count on the fabric or go over one. And with 28 count, if you're going over one, that's a lot of work. I mean, I don't know if you can quite see here how fine this fabric actually is, but if you're going over one, so you're going up one hole, over one hole, up one hole, that would be a lot of work and you would probably need a magnifier to work on that and it would just be it would be incredibly detailed and so beautiful but it would take a lot of work and probably a lot more patience than some people including myself have so that's why fractionals are really good because you can do most of the pattern in full stitches but then um, you can do transitions between colors or certain details in the quarter stitches and the three quarter stitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this for you for now. So as you can see in the pattern here, they got this little demo right here, sorry, right there. So you can see, so like obviously these are different colors, the symbols. So you can see here it's got a little bit in this corner, a little bit in this corner, a little bit in this corner. So in the case of this square here with the dollar sign and the A, that would mean the top left sort of diagonal quadrant of this square is going to be that color. The bottom right is going to be that color. Same as this one here. Same as this one here. So that basically allows the colors to kind of bend around corners without losing any of the detail. So for example, if we're using like, let's say, let's say the turquoise that I'm using here is the A. So let's, I'm going to do this one here, this little tiny corner here, so I'd be wanting to do that bottom right corner as, you can either do it as a quarter stitch, which I will show you, or you can do it as a three quarter stitch, which I will also show you. So, so here is my piece here, here is where, so the A in the pattern I just showed you, is going to be taking up, so the green is going to be taking up this particular quadrant right here. So what you're going to want to do, it's really hard to do and watch the video at the same time, make sure it's in focus. Okay, so make sure that's focused. Okay, so you're putting your needle in into that bottom quadrant, because remember it's going to be in the bottom right. Come up. And instead of going across the full piece, like you normally would for a full stitch, you're just going to go halfway. So you're going into, you're only using one quarter of that whole quadrant, so that's why it's called a quarter stitch. And uh, so that's a quarter stitch. I know, it's super thrilling. So this uh, quarter stitches can be used for just on their own for detail, like let's say uh, whiskers or eyelashes or things like that. You'll find some patterns have that. You can actually do fractionals in Ada fabric, but you actually have to puncture if you're not going over two, like I'm showing you here, where it's like up two over two, you actually have to puncture the center of these um, blocks of thread. It is possible to do. It's just a little tricky because it's a little bit, uh, with the tapestry needles, it's a bit tricky to pierce these uh, threads. But you can actually go right through the middle of that if you're wanting to do it um, in Ada fabric. And then, so that's a quarter stitch. And then if you're wanting to make it a three quarter stitch, all you would do up and across like that so there you go that's your three-quarter stitch and then if you have another color that's coming into this quadrant here like in this um, thing here you can see it's got the other it's got the little dollar sign there so whatever color that one would be you would do your quarter stitch and then you would do your half stitch you can do another quarter stitch by itself, so like let's pretend that this is say black. You could do another quarter stitch just on its own, which would be fine, 
So this little section here would be your other color, your black, and that would look just fine. Um, what I actually quite really like about this pattern is it's explaining a way to make your color demarcations more clear, and that's to actually do, instead of doing a three-quarter stitch, which is what I did here with this one and this longer thread here, you can actually do two three-quarter stitches, and that way you'll end up with two of them side by side, so I'll show you that. And that way you'll actually end up with your two colors right next to each other, so you would actually go through these holes again. So sorry, I'm not using a separate color. I don't have another needle threaded right now. But you can see there, you'd actually end up with your two your two right next to each other. So that's going to provide a really, really, really clear demarcation of color. That way you're going to get nice sharp lines, uh, particularly in this pattern that I'm working on. Uh, it's uh, based on native art, so the, the changes of colors and stuff like that are quite crisp and quite clear. There's not any a lot of blending and such like that. They're, they are quite, quite sharp lines where the colors are changing. So that's why this pattern recommends doing the two three-quarter stitches instead of just um, a three-quarter stitch and then a quarter stitch. So yeah, so, and I'll show you quickly how you can do it with the Ada fabric if you are using, if you're wanting to do this in Ada. So let's say down here. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get the camera centered. Okay, so let's go down here. So I'm just going to do a three-quarter stitch down in this little quadrant down here, but I'm not going to go up two and over two like I did for these ones. I'm just going to use the one actual block like you would. So like I said, this is 14 count Ada. So you can pierce. It's a little bit trickier with a um, a tapestry needle. Like like I said, the tapestry needle. The whole point of a tapestry needle is it's not supposed to pierce the actual threads. Uh, it just goes between them, and that way you're not going to pierce your floss and and start shredding it and things like that. I'm just going to try and get the camera in a way you can see this. There you go. So you can see it's actually gone right between those threads in the middle of the block of the Ada. So there's your tiny dinky little quarter stitch. Sorry, just trying to focus it. There we go. And then to do your three quarter stitch, same thing. It doesn't really, like, I don't really have a preference as to which direction I start from, whether I start from the top and go down or bottom up. It depends on sort of which direction I'm working in general across that piece. Shabam! There is your three quarter stitch right there. And then again, if you're wanting to do another color on this side, if it's a full coverage piece or you're having two colors butting up next to each other, I would do the exact same thing. I would do your quarter stitch, and then I would do your, your half stitch across the top to make it a three-quarter stitch. So that's pretty much it. That's what fractionals are. Um, I know in certain patterns it can look really confusing, particularly, you know, as you're seeing all these tiny little, you know, symbols and they're all mixed up and you're like oh my god I don't understand um, it is actually technically possible to get four quarter stitches like get one of each color like let's say you've got like the center of a flower here and say this petal's purple this one's blue green yellow whatever I'm just making an example and then this little quadrant here happens to be where they're all meeting technically you could get four quarter stitches in which case you would just do these tiny little ones like I explained to you before the one and one, and one, and one, and you wouldn't actually end up with any of the longer half stitches going across. I haven't seen any patterns that do that yet, but like I said, this is my first time using fractionals, and um, yeah, I'm pretty sure there are patterns that do that, but yeah, I try to keep, when I'm designing, I actually try to keep my patterns as simple to follow as possible so that anybody can do them. But yeah, so these, um, like I said, these instructions, uh, this video is based on the instructions from the Stitching Studio patterns, which is uh, stitchingstudio.com. I will be making my own little uh, mini uh, chart about this and putting it on the blog post below. And uh, also be putting in uh, links to the other videos that I mentioned. And also, if um, if you enjoyed this video and you're interested uh, in sharing this, that would be fantastic, just because I think cross stitch is one of those uh, hobbies where obviously you can get quite technical like with the fractional stitches and whatnot um, but it's so simple to learn I mean like basically it's literally making an X with thread 
and counting to 10. I mean, that's the essence of cross stitch. You can get, you know, to railroading and the fractionals, and you can get quite complex with it, of course, if you really want to. But the essence, it's really simple. And I've heard recently, particularly, so many stories about how people, how uh, people's lives have been changed by doing a hobby like cross stitch because it allows them time to relax and it allows them time to just be on their own and to basically not think like using your hands uh, for any kind of handcraft is uh, like moving meditation. So it really, really does have, you know, significant um, health benefits, as well as teaching you how to be more creative. And uh, you end up with a really nice project at the end that you can either, you know, keep for yourself or give to somebody else. Um, so yeah, I, if you enjoyed this video, and you and you obviously enjoy cross stitching, I would really recommend uh, sharing this video and other videos and just getting your friends into it and getting them to really learn about you know, the benefits of, of stitching and hobbies in general. It's pretty awesome seeing how something as simple as making an X in thread can really legitimately have really significant effects on people's lives. And also, uh, I thought I'd mention too, I've got uh, uh, some sneak peeks and stuff coming out very soon um, for the new pattern releases I'm doing. So if you'd like to be involved in seeing those sneak peeks, you can join my VIP club. And the link for that is, is below and also in the video description. Uh, you will get sneak peeks, so you'll see full pictures of the new designs I'm working on instead of just little snippets that I show on my social media accounts. Um, you'll get exclusive offers that are only for the club members. Uh, you'll also get uh, the latest blog post sent to you, and you'll also get a 15% off discount code, which you can use either on your first purchase or save it for later, whatever blows your hair back, as my cousin would say. And yeah, so if you'd like to join up for that, uh, you can do that. And like I said, if you have any questions or comments, or if I haven't explained something clearly enough, please feel free to let me know. Um, sometimes what seems like it's making sense to me might not make sense to somebody else. I try really uh, to be as clear as I possibly can with my instructions because I, I do want people to understand and to learn. I mean that makes me really happy when people learn new tricks and they learn how to do things more easily and they learn more advanced techniques that actually legitimately makes me really happy when people figure this stuff out. So yeah, any comments or whatnot, please feel free to let me know below. If you have any projects that you're working on that you have any questions on or you would like um, comments on, please feel free to post them to my Facebook page. I'll put a link to that below in the video description as well. And yeah, I hope you have an awesome day. Talk to you later. Bye for now.